Oh, shit. Oh. The whole sunroof leaks. Oh, oh speak of the devil. Here, look. Reed, do you want to hold the cup for him? Look, watch your camera. <laughs> storm passed and it was, everything was a mess. All the wires you see were in the street. The poles were snapped off to land in the street. We had no communications. Very strange, very eerie. Hurricane Harvey was the most expensive storm in the state's history. It killed dozens of people. It had such a widespread impact on uh, so many people, almost the entire Texas coast. This was a category four hurricane wind at 130 miles an hour for eight plus hours. My district was really at the heart and soul of Hurricane Harvey, Rockport, Fulton, Port Aransas. Houston got a lot of the attention during Harvey, and I think that made communities like Rockport and Port Aransas angry or like perturbed in that um, they were affected a whole lot more per capita. I think some people would say that Rockport was just wiped out. Every apartment complex in the community was destroyed. Monies that were promised from the federal government to come down through the state have just been slow in getting here. Don't know why. There have been dozens of bills filed this session related to Harvey, a bill that will help communities with local matching funds and with future flood control projects. To some extent, we'll both get through, absolutely. So it's a matter of how much and you know the mechanism um, that it will be done. We've come a long way but we have so far to go. If you look down the sidewalk, you'll see at the bend a set of steps that go to nowhere. There were buildings that were there that were just flattened by the storm. And that's a, a pretty popular place for people to come in, they sit on those steps and they have their picture taken, sort of stairs to nowhere. So many of our businesses that are slowly coming back on, online, um, still waiting for some of them, but it's, it's exciting to see things coming back together. If you only come through here for the first time, it doesn't seem too bad, but there are there's still a lot of signs. Like I say, every multifamily development is gone. The people that work in the in the restaurants and the hotels, they were re relocated to other communities. They'd like to come back, but there's just no affordable housing right now. Rockport Hands of Hope has approximately 300 homes in our queue that still need to be fixed following damage from the storm. The cosmetics of the city itself have improved exponentially, but you only have to go off a couple of blocks to find a home that is still in pieces. Here we are almost two years later, and there are still no apartments. So when we began to rebuild the contract labor, the, there wasn't any. I'm working with the Hands of Hope organization. We are completely overloaded. This town has a very big shortage on labor just because a lot of our mid-size and lower size income housing has not been brought back yet. When we first arrived almost two years ago, this town was a ghost town. The recovery process was really good, but I think that a lot of Rockport was kind of cut short on long-term recovery processes. The first six months, we had a lot of support from a lot of agencies outside of town, and then it just kind of every man for themselves. Insurance stuff was, was terrible out here. And so it's like a lot of these people just got left in the dark. It's a very funny and odd situation to be living in a Baptist church. <laughs> but um, my family of six were living here. We were denied by FEMA. We were denied by Red Cross. We were denied by everybody. The little check boxes, if they're not figured out perfectly, and if it doesn't line up perfectly, they just deny you. It leaves families without resources and not really knowing where to go or how to get the help you need. We're headed to what we call the pad. It's normally our home, but there's nothing left. So what we had during the storm was our 35-foot fifth wheel that sat there. Oh my goodness, our whole road is flooding. This is our pad, our home. Normally we have a trailer here. 
We came home on the Sunday after the storm and I have never in my life seen such destruction. It looked like a bomb went off. It's like every time it rains, there's just this whole new wave of terror that happens because you just don't have enough shelter. Yep. Hold on. Put him in the hat, in the hat. Come here, babies. Come on. Oh, come on. It's okay. They were drowning. Their toolbox was filling up with water and she didn't know how to move them. Right here, look, I have your babies. I have your babies. In situations like this is why we have PTSD from the rain. She's so happy. You wanna go see your babies? <laughs> I met with Cindy, with Hands of Hope, and Christopher from Catholic Charities. And immediately they just said, we have something for you. And it was the most incredible experience to be seen and heard. And within four, maybe five weeks, we were approved for a brand new 2018 trailer. <laughs> and I can't wait to go home. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Today, uh, I come before you to announce Senate Bill 6, which is hurricane recovery legislation. We're working with the individuals who still are saying, my home's not repaired. We're working with public entities like school districts who say, I'm still missing 300 students. And I think that's what this session's about, is how do we recover? Local communities have been kind of antsy, waiting, especially on whether the state will assist them with millions of dollars that they need to draw down more federal recovery dollars and mitigation dollars as well. Um, so the federal government, before they give you a bunch of money, they often require cities and counties to put down a little bit of money. And communities that were severely impacted by Harvey say our economies were obliterated during the storm. We need help with this local match. How do we make sure those dollars that are promised to us actually flow and get them back on their feet again? It isn't always just about uh, we have to throw a billion dollars into the devastation from Hurricane Harvey. It's where are you going to put that billion dollars? Start down here. Because if you start down here and you get these people working, then they can help you do the rest to build it up to the top. And the commitment of our leaders in the state, we're with you. We're not going to leave you. We got your back. When you recover from a major disaster like this, it takes a long, long time. And that is to recover physically and mentally. I still have people who cry with me. Myself. But then on the flip side, I say, I see the resilience of Texans. Senator Cole Korst and Representative Jeannie Morrison had just been terrific in helping our area. And they've championed some great bills, but they've got an eye on not putting it back the way it used to be. We've got to build it back better, stronger, more resilient. And that's the goal. A lot of the bait stands were gone in the water. Um, there's one of our big birds crossing the street, so we got to show them a little respect. 